Hello, my dear learners. A very good morning, everyone. I am Shashank, and I welcome you all on English Medium Prep by Example, which is the official English Medium YouTube channel. So, students, very good morning, everyone, and welcome to the session. And please confirm your attendance. Then we are going to start the session. And today. we have started a previous year question series and it is not only important for the cpo it is also important for the cgl and steno and from the and on 4th of 4 pm we have started exclusive series for the ssc cgl because what we have seen ki there is sectional cut off so we should practice the standard level question for cgl because what we have seen ki in tier 1 we have the sectional cut off and in tier 2 also the it is coming of 75 marks so it is much important now we have to cover general awareness in such a matter that for tier 1 and tier 2 it should touch the level of the cds or capf exam so that if this question comes in this particular form then you should not get worried about this so first of all very good evening uh, good morning everyone and welcome to the session very good morning everyone and welcome to the session guys and please confirm your attendance also so please confirm your attendance as well then we are going to start today's discussion then we are going to start the today's discussion guys and first of all today we are going to discuss the previous year questions previous year papers of ssc cg of ssc cpo exam chsl exam and steno exam and from at 4 pm we will be starting the session exclusively for ssc cgl examination in which we will try to cover both tier 1 and tier 2 so students now let's start the session and this is the first session of the previous year question series and for chsl cpo and steno grapher so we will be covering all the examination we will be not leaving any stone unturned so cgl will be covered in the evening session and cpo chsl and steno that will be covered in morning session so let's start the session guys and here is the first question that is before you and the question before you is ki which script was used in ashoka's inscription so which script was used in the inscription of samrat ashok is it brahmi devanagari gurumukhi or sanskrit so which script was used in the ashoka's inscription brahmi devanagari gurumukhi or sanskrit so what will be the correct answer guys which script was used in ashoka's inscription Ashoka's inscription means inscription of Ashok. Which script was being used? Can you tell me the answer? So that's a very easy question to answer. In fact, so that's a very easy question to answer. Okay, let's come to the. correct answer guys first of all ashoka's inscription ashoka's inscription guys it was found from if it is found from india then it will be brahmi and the language will be prakrit then if it is found from pakistan then the script will be kharosthi and language will be prakrit so if it is found from india then it is brahmi prakrit and if it is found from the pakistan it is kharosthi prakrit kharosthi it is written right to left and brahmi it is written right left to right so out of this there is no kharosthi in the option so correct answer will be none other than brahmi so correct answer will be none other than brahmi devnagari script hindi it is written in devnagari script gurumukhi script punjabi language punjabi language 
that is written in Guru Mukhi script and that was developed by second Sikh Guru that is Guru Angad. Guru Angad Dev and Sanskrit guys it is written modern Sanskrit. It is written in Devanagari. Modern Sanskrit it is written in Devanagari. And if I talk about English, English it is written in Roman script. And whereas Urdu and Arabic that is written in Arabic script. So correct answer will be guys option A that is Brahmi San Brahmi and the language of the Ashok that was Brahmi Prakrit. So correct answer will be what? It will be option A that is Brahmi Prakrit. And Ashok was the first king of the ancient India to discuss with the people through inscription. So he was the first king. First king of ancient India to communicate people with inscription, to communicate with people. An inscription of Ashok, it is divided into four parts, major rock edict, Second is minor rock edict. Third is cave edict. And fourth is pillar edict. So generally these four types of inscription that is found for the Ashoka. So major rock edict, minor rock edict, cave edict and pillar edict. So, correct answer will be guys option A that is through Brahmi and if it is found from the Pakistan then it will be Kharosti. So, Kharosti it is not an option. Therefore, we have to go for the Brahmi. Guru Mukhi script, the Punjabi language is written in Guru Mukhi script and it was developed by second Sikh Guru that was Guru Angad Dev. Therefore, correct answer will be option A that is Brahmi. I hope my dear students that is all clear to everyone and that was also a very easy question to understand. So I hope it is a very easy question and uh, you must have got the correct answer as well. And inscription of Ashok that is of four type, min major rock edict which is written on big stone, minor rock edict which is written comparatively on the small stone, cave edict that was written on the walls of the caves and the pillar edict which is written on a stone pillar. So these are the four types of edicts of Ashoka. Now come to the next question. Next question is also an easy question to answer and the next question before us is ki the Harappan site Manda that is located on the bank of which river? So Harappan site Manda that is located on the bank of which river? Is it Chenab, Satluj, Ravi or Indus? So, Harappan site Manda that is located on the bank of which river? This is the question to answer. So, it's a very easy question guys. This question came once in CPO examination. So, what will be the correct answer to? What will be the correct answer? What will be the correct answer guys? Okay, Momita is saying option D, that is Indus River. Okay, so we are talking about Manda. We are talking about Manda. So, good morning, Momita. Okay, so guys, first of all, if I talk about Manda, it is a northernmost site. Of Indus Valley Civilization. It was the northernmost site of Indus Valley Civilization that is located in Jammu Kashmir and on the bank of river Chenab. On the bank of river Chenab. So correct answer will be option A that is Chenab. And if I draw the extremities of Indus Valley Civilization, extremities of Indus Valley Civilization. 
northern most site Manda that is located in JNK. Let me make a correct figure so that everyone can see and understand. Northern most site Manda JNK on the bank of river Chenab. Then eastern side Alamgirpur, Uttar Pradesh on the bank of river Hindan. Third is Daimabad on the bank of that is in Maharashtra on the bank of river Pravara and the western part is Sutka Gendor and it is located in Baluchistan on the bank of river Dashk. Baluchistan now it is in Pakistan. Therefore what will be the correct answer? It will be option D that is Chenab. Now Satlaj river Satlaj, uh, there is a site called Ropad that is located in the bank of river Satlaj. Ropad it is in Punjab. Then Ravi, Harappa. Harappa it is on the bank of river Ravi and it is in the Punjab province of Pakistan. And next is Indus that is Mohan Judaro. and Chandhudo. It is on the bank of river Indus and now it is also in Pakistan. So it is in the Sindh province of Pakistan. Therefore correct answer will be guys option B that is Chenab river. So that is Chenab river that is located in the northernmost site that is Manda. It is in the Jammu and Kashmir northernmost site of Indus Valley civilization. Now if you will read about Daimabad. Daimabad it is in Maharashtra and in some books you will find it is written it is on the bank of river Godavari. It you will find written in some of the books. This you will find written this as well, but it is technically wrong. It is technically wrong. Reason is this ki the main river is main river is Pravara. Main river is Godavari and the tributary is Pravara. So actually the river is Pravara, which is the tributary of Godavari. Therefore, you will find in some of the books it is written as Godavari, but Godavari it is technically wrong. The thing should the river should be Pravara, but the mainstream of Pravara is Godavari. Therefore, in some books they write Godavari as well. Therefore, correct answer will be option A that is Chenab and Daimabad. The problem with Daimabad, I hope you all have understood. In some books you will find written Godavari, but it is technically wrong. The correct answer should be Pravara which is a tributary of Godavari. So correct answer will be option A that is Chenab. Hmm. Now come to the next question ki Kamrup it is an ancient name of which region of India. So Kamrup it's a very famous place and Kamrup it is an ancient name of which place of India. Kamrup it is a famous name of which place of India. Kamrup. So Kamrup, it is an ancient name of which of the following states of India. So guys, Kamrup, it is the old name old name of Assam. So it is the old name of Assam and guys it is also known as Kamrup Kamakya. So 
यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट फ्रॉम द ओल्डरली पीपल दे यूज टू से काम रूप कामाख्या काम रूप कामाख्या कामाख्या इट इज द नेम ऑफ द डाइटी एंड दिस इज दिस कामाख्या टेम्पल दैट इज लोकेटेड इन असम सो दैट इज द असम एंड इन दिस असम देर इज अ प्लेस कॉल्ड गोहाटी वेयर द कामाख्या टेम्पल इज एंड देर यू विल फाइंड द एंशियंट नेम वॉज प्राग ज्योतिषपुर सो प्राग ज्योतिषपुर दैट वॉज द नेम ऑफ गुवाहाटी इट वॉज द कैपिटल ऑफ वर्मन डायनेस्टी प्राग ज्योतिषपुर दैट वॉज द कैपिटल ऑफ वर्मन डायनेस्टी एंड दैट इज इन द असम दैट इज द गुवाहाटी रीजन सो प्राग ज्योतिषपुर दैट वॉज द नेम ऑफ गुवाहाटी वेयर एज कामरूप दैट वॉज द ओल्ड नेम ऑफ असम एंड बिहार द नेम डेराइव फ्रॉम द इट इज डिस्टॉर्टेड नेम ऑफ विहार सो अर्लियर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर रीजन देर वर मेनी बुद्धिस्ट विहार देर वर मेनी बुद्धिस्ट विहारास एंड विहार इट वॉज द रेसिडेंस ऑफ बुद्धिस्ट मॉन्ग्स it was the residence of buddhist monks so correct answer will be guys option d that is assam and bihar it is the distorted name of vihar so the name bihar came from the distorted name of vihar and vihar it was like a buddhist residence ki where the buddhist monks used to live that was called vihar other than this you will find ki in the buddhist architecture you have vihar chat and stoop vihar that is the residence of buddhist monk chat that is the place of worship and stoop that defines the death of buddha and this was it is said that it was created on the relics of the buddha so these are three things that is related to the buddhist architecture so correct answer will be option d now guys we will be moving to the next question and we'll discuss ki what actually the next question is for us okay very easy question guys very easy question for all of you the question is ki the capital of the mauryan dynasty was located where so where was the capital of the mauryan dynasty where was the capital of the mauryan dynasty so where is the capital of mauryan dynasty that was the question ki mauryan dynasty that was the third dynasty to rule over magadha so third dynasty to rule over magadha after sorry not third haryang shishunag nand so that is the fourth dynasty not third it was the fourth dynasty after haryang शिशुनाग एंड नंद डायनेस्टी सो फोर्थ वर द मॉरियन डायनेस्टी सो इट वॉज द फोर्थ डायनेस्टी टू रूल आफ्टर हरियंक शिशुनाग नंद मौर्य एंड द फाउंडर वॉज चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य फाउंडर वॉज चंद्रगुप्त मौर्य and you will find ke the capital was patliputra that is the present patna so correct answer will be option a that is patliputra vaishali that was the capital of vajji republic so vaishali that was the capital 
ऑफ वज्जी रिपब्लिक लुम्बिनी दैट इज द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ बुद्धा दैट इज नाउ इन नेपाल एंड गया एंड इन गया गाइज इट इज फेमस फॉर पितृपक्ष मेला विष्णु पद टेम्पल एंड मंगला गौरी टेम्पल सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन ए दैट इज पाटली पुत्र करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन ए दैट इज पाटली पुत्र लुम्बिनी दिस इज द बर्थ प्लेस ऑफ बुद्धा राइट नाउ इट इज इन नेपाल दैट इज इन रूमिन देई डिस्ट्रिक्ट एंड वजी दैट वॉज द ग्रुप ऑफ एट रिपब्लिक and the, it is also in bihar so the capital was vaishali and vaishali it is also the venue of second buddhist council that was held in 383 bc that was held in 383 bc so correct answer will be option a that is partly putra i hope i think it is clear to all of you guys let's move to the next question so let's move to the next question that is about the vedas so the third question is ki which of the veda it is not included in vedatrai so which of the veda it is not included in vedatrai which of the veda is not included in the vedatrai rigved yajurved samaved or atharva ved so which of the following veda guys it is not included in ved trai which of the following veda it is not included in ved trai rigved yajurved samaved or atharva ved of the following veda is not included in ved trai see first of all ved trai ved means knowledge and trai means three so first three vedas first three vedas they are included in ved trai that is rigved यजुर्वेद एंड सामवेद ऋग्वेद यजुर्वेद एंड सामवेद दे आर इंक्लूडेड इन वेद थ्रे एंड अथर्वेद इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड अथर्वेद नॉट इंक्लूडेड नाउ व्हाई इट इज नॉट इंक्लूडेड इन वेद थ्रे फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स get the answer so why it is not included in vedatrai let's get the reason first of all guys the subject matter subject matter of vedatrai subject matter of atharved is spells and charms and this spells and charms was not practiced not practiced by it was not being practiced by whom so it was not being practiced by aryans therefore this atharved it is also called veda of non aryans therefore it is also called veda of non aryans so correct answer will be atharved because it is the subject matter is spells and charms and this type of thing was not being practiced by aryans ऋग्वेद मंत्रास टू प्रेज गॉड 
देन यजुर्वेदा मेथड ऑफ यज्ञ एंड सैक्रीफाइज ऑफर्ड इन यज्ञ देन सामवेद दैट इज द म्यूजिक सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी ऑप्शन डी दैट इज अथर्व वेद एंड आउट ऑफ दिस यजुर्वेद इट इज सच अ वेद विच इज रिटर्न इन प्रोज एंड पोएट्री सो वेद विच इज रिटर्न इन प्रोज एंड पोएट्री सो द वेद विच इज रिटर्न इन प्रोज एंड पोएट्री दैट इज कॉल्ड यजुर्वेदा so correct answer will be what it will be option d and option d is atharved why atharved it is not included in vedatrai because the subject matter is completely different and it is the spells and charms so correct answer will be guys option d that is atharv veda so that is atharva ved okay so guys first of all now i will request those students to please download the example app in their mobile so why to download the example app first of all we will understand okay what things they are offering to us first of all with we are getting the live paid classes with the test series and that is on a very minimum price so that is on a very minimum price or simply you can say reasonable or pocket friendly price then you will be getting the free subject wise and topic wise quizzes along with the report report card in pdf form so report card is developed in such a way guys ki once you will go through the report card you will find ki it is designed in such a way that will highlight your strong areas and also on your gray areas where you have to work and where you have to improve the things now you will be getting the job alert admit card and exam date also so what happens generally ki sometimes we miss any examination that is with because of our negligence ki we are not aware of of that exam for example this thing happened in the supreme court jca ki many students missed the form because they were not aware of the things so we will you will be getting job alert admit card and exam date other than this all exams previous year pdf with the solution so previous year pdf with the solution that you will be getting in the pdf format through which you can take the print out and you can use it in your future other than this free all india scholarship test with the report card this facility is going to start very soon we are working on it this facility is going to start very soon under this live test column now topic wise free live classes that is going to start very soon we are working on it so that is going to start very soon in the ssc module then free full length and sectional test along with the report card so you will be getting in the form of pdf ki free full length and sectional wise test along with the report card then free exam wise pdf practice set pdf you will be getting other than this daily weekly and monthly current affairs this is all in the form of pdf and it will be bilingual bilingual in nature ki you will be getting the things bilingually that means in english and hindi so if you are comfortable in english you can go through the english language if you are comfortable in hindi you can download the things in hindi and you can read so that the major concern that is of the current affairs with the student ki how to read current affairs what to read in current affairs that has all been sorted out now unlimited subject wise practice question that you will be getting so unlimited subject wise practice question you will be getting so that more you practice more you sweat in practice the less you bleed in war so that is the main features that example official app is offering now how to download this app so next we have to see how to download this app first of all you have to go on google play store and once you go on google play store just you have to type example so just type example 
once you will type example and will search you will find this type of icon that comes example sarkari nokri prep now what you have to do just you have to click on install and once you click on install the app will get installed in your mobile phone and if you are using it for the first time the, it will ask you to register so first of all you have to click on let's register once you will click on let's register a small form will be open before you like in this way there you have to fill all the basic necessary details then you have to tick the check box and you have to click on register once you will click on let's register the app will get registered and you can use the app after this so this is how guys you have to download and use the example app so i hope it is clear to everyone so vijay good morning and uh, welcome to the session and this is how you have to register the example app once you will get register guys then you can use all the free features apart from the live test live paid courses all the rest of the features are completely without any charge so it is completely free so let's go to the next question and we have already discussed how to register the example app sir your classes are not seen in the schedule so no 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 it was seen in fact therefore i was thinking that some of the student might have missed this so it was being shown in the schedule sometimes it do happens ki due to some technical error it all went away but now it is showing so now it may have been have been it may be there ki it might not be showing because of some technical glitches now let's come to the next question very easy guys question for you okay the first grammarian of the sanskrit language from 4 pm guys the, there is change in the timing because of the coming cgl exam and what we have seen ki we will be trying to practice you on a standard level question so that ki once it comes in exam also you can easily solve those hmm. okay so that may happen uh, vijay there must be some technical error but now that error is rectified and just uh, we are starting a particular topic wise question answer in the in the cgl examination as well so the first grammarian of the sanskrit language very easy question guys first grammarian of the sanskrit language that was panini and panini he was associated with mahapadmanand he was associated with mahapadmanand although he was not the court poet of mahapadmanand so he was the friend of mahapadmanand so associated with maha padmanand so who was the founder of this nand dynasty who was the founder of nand dynasty and he wrote the book ashtadhyay so the name of the book was ashta that contains eight chapters so it has total eight chapters therefore it was known as ashtadhyay and patanjali wrote mahabhashya which is commentary on ashtadhyay so patanjali wrote mahabhashya that is commentary on ashtadhyay and he was the propounder of yog philosophy he was propounder of the yog philosophy and associated with the court of pushyamitra shunga associated with the court of pushyamitra shung associated with the court of pushyamitra shung kalhand wrote raj tarangini which is on the history of kashmir which is on the history of kashmir yes your next class is visible on 24th september not at all not at all so first of all check the things guys because the next class is not on 24th it is 
hopefully so there must be some technical error after the session will be over i will be discussing with the team so the next class if you go and see that is at the 4 pm today so that is at the 4 pm today that is all about the panchayati raj system and it may be there ki due to the upcoming CGL exam the playlist of the session is being updated therefore some technical problem might be there so my next session will be at 4 pm and that will be of Panchayati Raj institution so we are working on it so that it can get rectified because of the CGL exam we have to change the whole pattern of the session now the next is the Kalidas Kalidas he was in the court of Chandragupta Vikramaditya Chandragupta Vikramaditya and he was associated and he is famous for his seven writings. He was associated with for him, famous for his seven writings and although he was called the Shakespeare of India. Therefore, correct answer will be option C that is Panini and Panini he was a very famous Sanskrit grammarian and it is said that ki during his childhood days he was very dumb student, he was very dumb personality who does not know how to read and write so he was very poor in studies. So one of the one time he went to an astrologer and asked him ki do I have education line, do I have education in my fate. So that astrologer said ki no you don't have any education line in your palm so you cannot get study you cannot study so then he asked from that astrologer ki where is the education line that is in in it, that is in the palm so he just pointed ki okay this place you will find that education line so what he did he just put a he just took uh, put a mark through the knife on his hand and made that line then he thought ki, okay education line does not cannot decide my fate so I will work harder and harder to get educated so after this he started working very hard and finally he wrote the first grab book on the Sanskrit grammar that was Ashtadhyay so always he said that ki, the fate does cannot decide the whole future so lines cannot decide the whole future of a person so after which he did too much hard work and finally the result came ki he became the first grammarian of the Sanskrit language. So that was through Ashtadhyay he became immortal and the commentary on Ashtadhyay that was written by Patanjali who wrote Mahabhashya that was the commentary on it and he was the propounder of yoga philosophy. So he was propounder of yoga philosophy associated with the quote of Pushyamitra Shung. So, correct answer will be option D, that is Patanjali. So, that was the whole story and when I was in class 7th, in fact, so in our Sanskrit grammar book, this story was, no, in fact, in class 6, the story of, of Panini was there, ki how he became so much educated, so he read, he wrote the first book on Sanskrit grammar. So, that was the whole story of Panini, how he became so much intelligent that he wrote the first book on Sanskrit grammar. Okay, very easy question guys, ki Sher Shah Suri defeated which Mughal Emperor? So this type of question comes in stenographer exam. So Sher Shah Suri defeated which Mughal Emperor? Sher Shah Suri defeated which Mughal Emperor? And your options are Humayu, Tamur Lang, Nadir Shah or Ahmad Shah Abdali. So, Sher Shah Suri defeated, huh. who wrote Maheshwar Sutra, he wrote Maheshwar Sutra, yes I have heard about this, it is a very famous thing that is Maheshwar Sutra, that is all about the Sanskrit grammar, Maheshwar Sutra, yes. So, that is also in the book of Ashtadhyay. So, the next question is, ki Sher Shah Suri defeated which Mughal ruler, very easy. Sher Shah Suri guys did not rule for too much time period, 1540 to 1545 is the brief time period of Sher Shah Suri and he defeated Humayu two times one in 1539 battle of Chosa Chosa it is in Bihar and this Chosa it is look it is on bank of river Karmnasha bank of river Karmnasha in which Sher in which Humayu was defeated brutally Humayu 
Humayu was defeated brutally and once Humayu saw he is going to get defeated, he along with his horse jumped in river Karmnasha. There the life of Humayu was shaped by a person who used to offer water to the soldier that was Nizam. That was the Bhishti. And in 1540, that is Battle of Karnoj or Battle of Bilgram. And this is in Uttar Pradesh. And after this, for a period of 1540 to 1555, Humayu fled to Iran. There he was helped by Shah Tamhasp. There he was helped by the king of Iran, that was Shah Tamhasp. Tamur Lang. Tamur Lang he invaded during the time of Nasiruddin Mahmud Tughlaq. 1398-1399. Nadir Shah Tamur Lang from, was from Samarkand. He was from Samarkand. Nadir Shah 1737, Battle of Karnal during the time of Muhammad Shah Rangila and finally he was from Iran. So he was also an invader, Ahmad Shah Abdali. Ahmad Shah Abdali invaded Delhi, invaded Delhi for the first time in 1757 during the time of Alamgir II, during the time of Alamgir II and he plundered Delhi and he was from Afghanistan. He was from Afghanistan. So during the time of Alamgir II, he invaded Delhi and there was only one purpose of invasion that was to plunder Delhi. And he became successful in plundering Delhi and Alamgir II, he was a very weak Mughal ruler. So he said, okay, okay I cannot do anything. And after this, he defeated Marathas that at that point of time, Marathas, they were the superpowers of India. So they were such a person who took the tax from everyone. So Marathas, the best quality of the Maratha in the medieval India during the time of after Balaji Vishwanath up to Peshwa Balaji, Baj, Peshwa Baji Rao Ballad, that was ki they took the tax from everyone, whether it's Mughal, whether it's any other kingdom. So they used to tax from everyone. Sir, how to prepare GS section? Definitely. Now GS is getting importance, getting importance along with the reasoning. Earlier in tier 1, it used to come 25 question. Now it is in tier 2 and in tier 1, you have to clear the sectional ops also. If you fail to clear any section, then your result will be barred. So every section you need importance. And first of all, what I always say, that is the conceptual understanding of the topic rather than reading some of the books and remembering some facts. So now remembering of the facts, remembering of the uh, just going through some of the books that is underrated books that is not going to help you out. Otherwise, if you fail in GS section, the whole preparation will go in vain and you are not be supposed to set in tier 2 and if in tier 2 you won't perform in general awareness also then you are also outside the race so now you have to develop the conceptual understanding of the topic rather than going for the some few facts few figures and reading underrated books and saying okay now it's only come in tier 1 25 question is the thing so What's the matter? So through any book, through any notes, we can make out the plan and can crack the examination because in tier 2, maths and English will be the game changer, but not it is that. The maths, the number of question earlier with math was 125, 100 in pre and 100 in main, 25 in pre. Now it is just 30 in pre, 30 in main and 25, that is only 55 questions, 70 questions are reduced so that's a very big change and now you have to clear the sectional cutoff also sectional cutoff also therefore that's need a concrete change in the strategy so first of all okay 
if you revise the notes then it will create the base in fact it will create the base and you can start using the things now you have to prepare minimum according to the level of cds because cds is also conducted on the graduation level same it is with the ssc also so now you have to shift your preparation to the cds and what cds demands conceptual understanding of the topic so if you are conceptually strong in any topic then it will be easy for you to clear the things otherwise if tier 1 the section does not get cleared then also the result is your effort will be in vain and if in tier 2 you do not perform well then also the things in vain so complete change in the preparational strategy therefore for this question guys correct answer will be option a that is humayu now you have to go according to the concept that is being demanded and that i have taught you earlier ki they try to develop the concept because once the concept is developed then it will be easy for you to answer any type of question other than this if you develop only some factual knowledge then definitely the next cgl will be the chance hmm. So now I will once I will first of all revise the things because the notes will be updated according to the need of the exam also. Tell me any book, any book will not work out. First of all, you have to practice through the standard books. Now the things have to be get standardized. Now the factual question, factual things will not come because tier one important 50 marks, 50 questions and altogether 75, 20, 75 plus 25, 100 marks is with GS and that can change your game as well. It can take you to income tax inspector and it can take you to CGL 2023 also. Definitely once I will be taking this type of session, the strategy session, there I will discuss the types, how you have to practice, how you have to make the notes according to the present scenario. Okay, so I will be taking a separate session on it. There we will discuss the everything. Now guys, let's move to the next question. Then we will be discussing, we will be taking a separate session. I will be taking it. Now, very easy question guys, ki who is known as the Tiger of Masur? Tiger of Masur. Ha, definitely Vijay, I will be taking a separate session on it, ki how to prepare general awareness for SSC CGL examination. So the next question before us is ki by who is known as the tiger of Masur? Tiger of Masur. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so my Video team, they are well enough to answer the question. One of my teammates from the video team, he said ki the correct answer will be Tipu Sultan. So correct answer is guys Tipu Sultan who was the elder son of Hyder Ali. Who was the elder son of Hyder Ali. Hyder Ali guys, he was the military commander and in fact Hyder Ali's son was Tipu Sultan. And in 1799, 4th anglo Masur War, 4th anglo Masur War, he died while fighting, while fighting with British East India Company and that happened during the time of Lord Wellesley. Who used to call himself as the Bengal Tiger. Who used to call himself as the Bengal Tiger. So correct answer will be option B. That is the Tipu Sultan. Hmm. Hmm. Now guys first of all you will see about Tipu Sultan. Ki he died while in Fort of Sridanga Patnam. in the fort of Sriranga Patnam and Sriranga Patnam guys the gate of the fort gate of the fort was opened by a person whose name was Mir Sadik 
and he was a traitor. Me Sadik was a traitor, and Lord Wellesley gave him the allurement that if you if you will help the British East India Company to ca uh, to capture Masur and to kill Tipu Sultan, you will become the next king of Masur. But and he came in that allurement and he opened the gate of fort of Shiranga Patnam, due to which all the British forces entered in India. But this person who was the traitor Mir Sadik, he was killed by Balkishan. Killed by Balkishan, and Balkishan was faithful of Tipu Sultan. Faithful of Tipu Sultan. Krishna Devraya, guys, fifteen zero nine to fifteen twenty nine. He was from Tolub dynasty. He was from Tulub dynasty and you will find he was from Tulub dynasty and Babar praised him. Praised Krishnadev Raya plus Rana Sangha in his autobiography. In his autobiography that was Tuzuk A. Babri that was Tuzuk A. Babri that was in Tuzuk A. Babri so correct answer will be guys option A B that is the Tipu Sultan so correct answer will be option B guys that is Tipu Sultan none other than Tipu Sultan Now come to the next question. Next question, guys. Let's come to the next question. Next question we have: Ki Abul Fazal was what at the Emperor's Akbar court? So what was the role of Abul Fazal in the court of Akbar? So what was the role of Abul Fazal in court of Akbar? Whether he was minister of culture, prime minister, finance minister, or was courtier? Courtier means darbari. So courtier means darbari. So what was the role of Abul Fazal? In the court of Akbar. So what was the role of Abul Fazal guys? Abul Fazal plus Fazi. They were siblings and they were son of a Sufi saint Sheikh Mubarak. They were the son of the Sufi saint Sheikh Mubarak. And Abul Fazal was the Prime Minister. That means he was the Wazir of Akbar. Wazir of Akbar. And he wrote Aine Akbari. So he wrote Akbar Nama. So writing of Abul Fazal. That was Akbar Nama. Akbar Nama which is written in three volumes. So which is written in three volumes and in Persian. And he was being killed by Bir Singh. And he was being killed by Bir Singh Bundela. On the order of Jahagir. So correct answer will be option B and finance minister that was Todarmal and courtier was Birbal. Courtier was Birbal. So Birbal was courtier guys. He was not given any particular position. He was the courtier. He was courtier, Darbari.
सो बीर सिंह बुंदेला मर्डर्ड हिम सो करेक्ट आंसर विल बी गाइज ऑप्शन बी दैट इज द प्राइम मिनिस्टर नाउ गाइज द टाइम इज अबाउट टू कम एंड संजय सर तोमर कैन कम संजय सिंह तोमर सर कैन कम एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो हेयर आई हैव टू स्टॉप माई सेशन एंड आफ्टर फ्यू मिनिट्स गाइज संजय सिंह तोमर सर विल कम टू डिस्कस द प्रीवियस ईयर पेपर ऑफ द क्वांट सो हेलो आशीष एंड देर फोर गाइज आई विल जस्ट कंक्लूड माई सेशन हेयर इट इज एंड विल डिस्कस द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इन अपकमिंग सेशन सो संजय सर तोमर विल कम एट एनी पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम सो यू डोंट हैव टू गो एनी वेयर संजय सिंह तोमर सर विल बी कमिंग एंड ही विल बी टेकिंग योर क्वांट सेक्शन नाउ I will just wind up my session here and will discuss three four questions that was being left to discuss in my tomorrow's session. So that was all for the day, guys. Let's meet to again at 4 p.m. for a special session on the CGL examination. There we will be covering the syllabus topic wise. So that's all for the day, guys. Let's meet in the next session that will be of the CGL. And after this, Sanjay sir, Tomar sir will come to take your quant session. So you don't have to go anywhere. Stay tuned with our channel that is English Medium Prep by Example. So that's all for the day. Thank you, everyone.